Today is going to be pretty simple. It's a three color flip cup pour on a 10 by 30 um, gallery level three canvas. It's um, pre primed, it's 100% cotton, pre stretched, and I believe it's one inch thick on this. So we're doing black, white, and red. I have two drops of treadmill 100% silicone in the black and the white. I have one drop in the red and most of this composite in these cups is black and white. There's a little bit of red in the middle and a little bit of red towards the end. I want to kind of focus on the black and white. We're going to see how it turns out. Red has a tendency to dominate stuff regardless uh, of where it's at in a painting. So this should be cool. Let's see what we get. I've already pre-coated with the exact same white just without the silicone so we have a titanium white we have a mars black and we have a deep scarlet red i'm going to give these just a minute and through the marvel of modern technology and editing, you guys are going to get a time lapse right now. I'm adding the uh, residual from the cups to the corners. It's just going to help that paint move off the edge. But I'm also going to do one other thing with this as it expands. We're going to let it expand for just a little bit. I'm going to run specific lines through it in solid colors. see what's going on in here in the bottom of this kind of neat and we'll have a little bit left over I'm gonna let that sink back down you can already see some cell generation popping up just so you guys know there is no water in this whatsoever except for whatever composition my paints are made of today I'm not even using expensive paint I'm using sergeant acrylic which is do i have it I don't have it out i'll get it for you by the end of the, uh, the segment and generic glue all 100 percent safe washable non-toxic and something else this is why i will never use water again this stuff is phenomenal. It's 
not a, it's not like Floetrol that comes out sort of like glue as a medium. It's a little bit thicker. This is a very thin liquid. Um, it's specifically designed as a paint additive and extender for various types of water-based acrylic paints, such as we're using today. I'm not sponsored by these guys. I actually, it was a happy accident. I want to get you a, a close-up of this bottle. It's a happy accident that I came across it. I ordered some off of Amazon. I will leave you a link in the description below. Um, because I was like, oh, they're out of the gallon Floetrol. That's cool. They're, they do run out on Amazon all the time. And as an affiliated person, I need to tell you that, yes, I do earn from qualifying purchases because this is how I make my way in the world. This is um, painting and airbrushing is what I do for a living. So this is setting up really, really cool, but we're gonna do something a little bit different. I do have some leftovers in here. And... We're gonna do... I know some, some folks don't like the lines and the ribbons, I do depending on what I'm doing. And because there are three very specific segmented pieces in this, we're gonna spice it up just a little bit. And it's just another way that you can really have some fun using a very limited palette. And you can already see some cool stuff setting up in it. Now I've got a paint stick down in here. And Rasper's going to bark. But I think he barks at the air. Barely certain. Thinner line of red. I'm going through it. Thinner line of red. And this is going to this is going to move around. This is not going to stay in a straight line because we still have to tilt this. But it's just going to be something a little bit cool and extra thinner line of red just once. I went back through a couple times with the black, although I might add a little bit more to this left side. And finish this all the way up the top. Come on. There we go. Just want to connect the dots with the top and the bottom. And we will lose some of it off the sides. tilted. I'm going to move these to the front. Well, your front, my back. I'm not going to torch this because I've got some fairly large cells set up. Um, so I'm not going to torch this until completely done moving it around. Let's see what we get, folks. We're going to go bottom to top first. and move these cups back to the back so that that's not inhibiting your view in any way. I'm 
We still have cells building in here, but we're gonna give it a little shove, as it were. Bring this back to the center for you guys. The one thing that I will say is very warm in the studio today. It's probably about 85 and climbing. I've got my air and um, dehumidifier units running so I am hopeful that it won't get too out of control Cool cells on this, you guys. And I'm liking that they're not overgrowing. I'm liking that there are larger cells generated in this. This is really turning out cool. Um, and then there's some smaller stuff as well. I want to kind of knock out air bubbles as we go. And these will continue to grow. I haven't torched the entire, like there's some spots through here that I really want to just kind of leave be. I love the rings around it. And give me a second, I'll bring you guys down and show you what it's looking like. And then the cells will continue to, to build on themselves for about an hour, hour and a half. But I think that the consistency of the paint being just a little bit thicker today, uh, intentionally, is going to help slow that generation down. So we'll see. We'll let you know. We'll, we'll give you a peek at it when it's dry. Just a little bit more through here. Man, I really, really like black, white, and red. I'm really digging it. Yep, let's give you guys a look. I'm going to shut the camera off, turn it right back on. Um, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let me show you some of the dry pieces from yesterday and the day before that. Again, this is uh, the first experimentation week with this new uh, latex extender, XIM latex extender. So this is completely dry. This is piece number one. It's an eight by 10 frame. It's a level two. It's pre-primed. Love the way it turned out. P 
piece number two. This is a little bit bigger. I want to say this is maybe a 11 by 16? No. 9 by 12. All of these pieces are available if you guys are interested in it. I'll leave my email in the description below as well. You guys can shoot me a message and we'll talk about what kind of varnish you guys want on these things. This turned out really, really well. And this is dry. No water needed. It's not slick. There's nothing to clean off. I thought that that perhaps would be, well, I looked at the ingredients and there is a little glycol. Um, it's not a primary ingredient in the latex extender, but it's in there. I think Floetrol has it too, though. So that's a neat piece. And another blue, white, orange. Super happy with that. So this is going to be a dual purpose little clip here. It's going to run about a minute. I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like as a close up. This is the piece that I've just completed. It's still wet. Um, I also just showed you if you're looking at the YouTube version of this, I showed you the dry pieces that I did the last couple of days but loving how this has turned out. Super happy with it. Three colors, three colors, titanium white, a deep scarlet red, and Mars black. No water was harmed during the making of this painting. It was not reduced with water. And there's no flow trial in this. What, what, what are you saying? Watch the YouTube video if you wanna see what I used. Super cool. Now just be mindful as you go through, as this continues to set up, that you're gonna wanna scrape, use your palette knife, or you can even use one of these little popsicle sticks if that's what you've got. But continue to scrape off any of the runoff and, and the overdrip that's gonna collect. It's gonna pull up on the bottom and it's gonna make it really nasty. It's harder to get off once it's dry. So just continue to scrape all of your edges on the underside of this painting. One of the things that I was hoping to achieve uh, by doing the ribbons, it's, I don't always do ribbons, some people don't like ribbons at all, but if, if it sets up well, you can create a vein and you can prominently see a vein through here of black, white, and red, and a red one here. Some of them are a little bit more subtle than the other ones. Um, overall, I am, this is probably one of my fave to dates that I've done. It's a little bit more subtle. It's a little bit more masculine. These colors would look good in anybody's house. So. This is how I make my way. This is going to be available. If you guys are interested in it, I'm going to leave my email in the description below. Make sure you hit me up and uh, we'll talk about that. It's going to take some time to dry. All of these things do. If you're new to fluid painting or if you are a fluid acrylic artist, then you understand it's going to take just a little bit. Now, one of the things that I haven't goofed around with yet that I'm interested in goofing around with is resin. I'm not afraid of it. I just don't have any. Um, we'll see how that goes. But I'm really loving the results of this. I'm going to show you one more time what I've used in place of Floetrol, in place of water. So let me show you that. XIM Latex Extender. It's liquid. Like, it, it's not thick. It's not as thick as Floetrol. It's an absolute clear liquid. Maybe has a little bluish tint to it. Um, but as viscous as water is. It's got a little bit of glycol in it, um, but I believe Floetrol does as well. I think I mentioned that earlier, but that's what I used. Super happy with the results. It dries well. Uh, showed you guys the dried stuff. So thanks for checking me out today. Um, gonna definitely do some spray sessions next.